In this video, I'm going to discuss the differences between a digital and an analog sensor and go over the pros and cons of each. What a sensor basically is, is that it measures some physical phenomena and then converts it to a voltage that then can be used. This output voltage is either digital or analog. The output of a digital sensor varies between a low and a high voltage, usually between ground and 5 volts or 3.3 volts depending, and it forms a square wave. How the square wave is understood is that it forms a protocol. Some combination of highs and lows represents a character, which is then sent as part of a greater message. One thing that's important to understand is that both the sensor and the receiving microcontroller needs to understand this protocol in order to decode the message. An analog sensor is much simpler because it just outputs a voltage between a low and a high value. These voltage levels vary by the application. It could either be 0 to 5 volts or even something like negative 12 volts to plus 12 volts. Instead of looking for certain characters within the message, the way an analog signal is processed is that you, you just look at the voltage and the voltage represents the value you're measuring or used in expression to get the value you're looking for. Here I'll demonstrate an analog sensor in action so it makes more sense. Right here I have an analog moisture sensor which measures the moisture content of soil. As you can see it has a voltage level associated with being completely dry. And then when you submerge it, it has another voltage level. And then when you pull it out it returns back to the original voltage, but not completely because there's still water on the sensor. Now that we know the low and high voltage levels, the sensor will output between those two voltages and then we can process the signal from there. Now I'm going to go over the pros and cons of digital and analog sensors. The pros of digital sensors is that digital sensors can be quite capable. For example, this sensor has oxygen, temperature, and pressure, has multiple modes with customization, and a means of calibration. Analog sensors in comparison could be quite simple as it would only measure one thing. Digital sensors can use common protocols like I2C and SPI, so large networks can be created with relatively simple coding and wiring. You would be able to create a single network of a variety of different types of digital sensors if they all use the same protocol. And lastly, for digital sensors, generally the failure state is pretty obvious. Either the result you're getting back from the sensor is complete garbage, or there's no response at all, you're just getting zero volts. The cons of digital sensors is that they could be quite expensive. Let's say you have to make a network of 100 temperature sensors. The cheapest digital temperature sensor could be, let's say $100, and so if you needed to make 100 of them, that's $10,000 of sensors. But if you could use analog sensors, you could find very cheap, small analog temperature sensors. And so the network could be a tiny fraction of the cost of a digital sensor network. With digital sensors generally need a microcontroller interface with it, and that could be a pain to set up. If the sensor isn't using a common protocol like I2C or SPI, but instead something proprietary, you'd have to learn their protocol and then make custom firmware to interface with the sensor. Digital daylines can also be quite sensitive. There's a lot of ways to avoid this problem, but it's still something to keep in mind. Now onto the pros of analog sensors. The biggest pro of analog sensors is the price. They can be very, very, very cheap, which is great for different hobbyist applications or applications where the cons of analog sensors aren't a big deal. This isn't always the case, but they can also be smaller, which will make it suitable for some applications. If you are using a microcontroller, reading an analog sensor value is dead simple. All you need to do is add a few lines of code that will use the analog to digital converter or the ADC of the microcontroller and then you get your value. Interfacing with other circuitry can be also very simple and for some applications a digital sensor would be just overkill. For example, let's say I was making a very simple moisture activated switch. If I used an analog moisture sensor I could connect directly to a small circuit, calibrate it and then I'm done. However, if I was using a digital sensor in most cases, I'd need a microcontroller. It would also work, but is a far more complex solution. Now the cons of analog sensors. It can be actually more complex if you need to build additional circuitry for filtering, conditioning, biasing the voltage, etc. And in a lot of cases, you still would need a microcontroller if the output of the analog sensor needed to be run through an expression to get the value you're looking for. The analog signal can also be prone to noise. And the main problem is you wouldn't exactly know if you're getting noise because you'd still get a voltage level. So it's easy to get it mistaken for an accurate value. There's no way for the analog sensor to tell you that it's wrong. And with that, if the analog sensor failed, it can also be hard to tell. 
let's say the lowest value of your analog sensor is zero volts, but also when it's turned off, it's at zero volts. So then how exactly will you know that the sensor is intentionally outputting zero volts or if it's just broken? Additional tests would be necessary and if the sensor is remote, it might be a little difficult to do. Lastly, they don't really form networks. Every sensor is kind of for itself. So if you needed a large network, the wiring can be kind of complex. Which sensor is better, analog or digital? You can't really say one's better. It's all about the application. Some applications, a digital sensor is absolutely necessary because an analog sensor wouldn't be suitable. But for some applications, let's say where the budget is quite sensitive and a $200 digital sensor would be overkill for something you could achieve with a $2 analog sensor, then an analog sensor is better. So really you just gotta look at your application and then pick the right sensor for the job.